The following presentation is brought to you through the paid memberships of NotaryStars.com, the only notary training platform and resource library with over 150 hours of training on every loan product under the sun. Together with our sister website, OnlineNotariesPublic.com, which focuses on notaries who are pioneering in remote online notary, we strive to give you a safe place to ask questions, get answers, gain confidence in your notary career, and achieve success without overfabricating the truths about our industry. If you would like to support us, please consider liking this video, subscribing to our channel, sharing this video with a colleague, or becoming a member and trusting us to help you achieve the level of success you desire. Well, hello, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, a quick shout out to California. Be safe. California has had a ton of snowfall in the upper elevations, strong winds, and enough rainfall to fill Lake Mead, resulting in lots of flooding and treacherous roads. And it's still coming. So prayers for all of you. So welcome to MGM Monday General Mentorship. If you're currently driving, please remember to remain off camera and in listen only mode. Your safety is important to us. If you're not driving, please remember to watch the chat for links to previous training and current topics that may further answer any questions you have. We really kicked off 2024 with some brilliant questions from you guys, and we hope to keep that momentum going. Today is Monday, February 5th, 2024. My name is Beth Hapoot. I'm the lead instructor for Notary Stars, and I have with me tonight two awesome co-hosts. Mr. Ronnie Mickle, who's the founder and co-owner of Notary Stars and Unlimited Ink Notary and Online Notaries Public, and Mr. Bill Bumfrey, or William Bumfrey, aka Mr. Bill. He's our expert remote online notary instructor. This public training session is held every Monday except for holidays, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard, 8 p.m. Eastern. It's all about you the brilliant notary and signing agent community who are striving to achieve, maintain, and surpass signing agent excellence. Everyone is trying to get somewhere, and this session is all about how we get there together. This type of session, this call-in show, works best if you can do a, a, just a couple of things. First, turn on your cameras, interact with us and your colleagues. It's so much easier to do this type of session when we can see live faces. Thank you so much, Mary, thank you. And number two, raise your hand to ask a question, to get into a queue or even offer something that you've learned to help someone else. All you have to do to virtually raise your hand is use the raise hand feature at the bottom of your screen. So before we get started, I'd like to ask you to consider following us on social media. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook. We post a great deal of information about free training sessions and short training nuggets. We'll post these links in the chat throughout the meeting and they'll also become accompanied by on the replay when this is uploaded to YouTube. Um, Mr. Ronnie, are you ready to kick off the meeting? I am. Um, guys, I just have a couple of announcements before we start uh, going into the session for tonight. First of all, I want to thank you for all of the amazing questions that you've sent in to Notary Stars. I cannot believe, first of all, we brought in 80 new members to Notary Stars just in the last month. 80 new members. And that's from you guys going out and saying what we have available under the hood. And it's just unreal. I mean, we we normally can bring in 30 users a month, 80 in a month. So welcome, because I know that some of you are brand new here. Uh, we are really going for signing agent excellence, and we're going to get into the questions. We kind of have a format tonight because we had a lot of uh, new people asking different questions. So we kind of grouped some of them together. They were similar. Um, but I want to make a couple of announcements, and then we'll get right into the questions. I'm going to remove my pen from the screen so that we can see that gallery. I'd love it if you light it up and turn on those cameras. One thing that I want to point out to notaries, and this is coming from a signing service owner, okay? Uh, at Unlimited Inc., and I own a signing service, we do quality control on documents. So you don't miss any signatures, but I see tons of notaries who send back IDs that don't match the documents, 
Okay, so as a signing service owner, one of the things that I do is I actually contact title and say, are you going to accept this? If they accept it and you took an ID that you can't take in your state, it's on you and it's in my contract and it's on other notaries contracts. You would be surprised at the amount of notaries that I see send back uh, actual, you know, packages with IDs that don't match. And if you notarize in a state on an ID that doesn't match the documents and your state doesn't allow that, guess who that ultimately falls on? You as a signing agent. So you have to make sure because if title says, I'm going to accept that, they're going to close with that. You perform the notarization. Not unlimited ink, not the title company, not the lender. It's in your court. So you've got to learn to make sure you look down at IID. Now, I'm not saying that everybody here does it because we're dedicated to signing agent excellence. But you'd be surprised how many times a week we get that and we ask title, are you going to take it? And they will. And it, ultimately, it's your fault. So I need to point that out because it's it's a big deal. Um, I want to go on to my next point here. Uh, I want to remind you that signing agents are not the only people that can get blacklisted. We have to change that word in 2024 from blacklisted to blacklisted. Uh, you are not the only one who can get blacklisted. I'm posting in the chat now. It is an updated list. And uh, I will tell you, it's been updated even since last week. There are signing services that you may not want to work for because they are either A, abusive to notaries, or B, don't pay. I did a whole article before on slow to pay and non-paying signing services, but we've updated the bl block listed of people you don't want to work with in 2024. And that, of course, it, it doesn't matter if you're uh, a listing only or a notary star or higher uh, membership level. I posted that in the chat. And then I also want to make one other announcement uh, that we can get, well, two others. Um, one other announcement is we went through all of the existing companies on our hiring list at Notary Stars for signing services and made sure they're still open so that you're not going and trying to apply for a company or add them to your uh, wheelhouse uh, to make sure they're open. So every website that's on our site is actually open. And I'm going to post those uh, two views in the chat. If you're watching the replay, uh, th those links will be there as well. There are two views. One is a list view. If you're not a Notary Star member, you can still have the names. We you can go Google all the companies in the world. So the list view is there. If you want the reviews, if you want to be able to add reviews, if you want to keep it internal, that view is for the Notary Star members. And that's posted in the chat as well. And then the last thing I want to uh, uh, mention is Last month, we brought in the top notary e-journals. This month, we're bringing in the three accounting softwares. And next up this week on Thursday night is Notary Gadget. They were one of the e-journals, but they're also accounting software. Last Thursday, we had VinBooks. Um, so please come into that session um, to, to uh, you know, learn about the accounting software. One of the questions that we had right in tonight is, you know, which one is the best? We're not going to tell you which one's the best. We're going to bring the best in and let you choose which one fits your business and your personality. Um, we're not in the game of saying who's the best here at Notary Stars because every single one of you is going to look down and say, this accounting software fits what I'm used to or what I need to do or looks best for me. Okay. We just bring you the top in the industry. And then the last two things that I'll say, and then we're going to get right into the questions because we have a lot from you guys and thank you. And I even saw they're still coming in. Um, if you missed our tax sessions, we are now into February, March, April. We're going to file taxes, right? If you missed the tax questions or if you're looking for direct business, I'm posting two things into the chat. We did a wonderful series with Glenn Hill, the tax lady, Notary Assist, and Travis did a, a recap of that called Notary Taxes Simplified. That's in the chat as well. I'll put it on the replay. Make sure you visit those. And if you're looking for direct business, we have a whole series once a month called Notary Business Talk with Abraham Zamora called Direct Business. So with that said, Ms. Beth, are you ready for the first question um, for the night? Absolutely. Ready to go, guys. Don't forget, get your hands up to get into queue if you want to ask a question live tonight. Otherwise, we're going to start with your jot form submissions, your riddle me this questions, 
Um, go ahead. You want to read that first one here or you want me to? Yes. Um, it says, can anyone become a notary and how long does it take? That's a really broad question. So for 50 states, if we're talking continental United States, almost anyone can become a notary. Um, there are some state regulations that look into your background so you can't have any criminal history in order to become a notary. You're gonna to have to figure that out based on uh, your state regulations. Um, and then how long does it take? Yikes, a month at, at, at the shortest period of time, a month, uh, up to a couple of months. California, for instance, is very backed up on notary applications. Um, uh, probably Utah is probably the shortest turnaround time. You have to figure out who your licensing agency is. So it's either your secretary of state or your governor's office. There's a few other kind of different ones on the East Coast, um, but just Google it. How do I become a notary in Maryland? And they'll let you know. So I'm sorry, I can't be more specific with you because I don't know what state you're in, but that'll give you a starting point. Okay. Mm, Ronnie, looks like this next one is for you. I would love to answer this one. Why don't you go ahead and... Uh, okay, it says, you. is the NNA truly the only place to become an LSA and to be recognized by most companies? Would you recommend I start my business page even though I'm not entirely free to do general notary work? So that's kind of a two-part question for you there. Let's start out with the first part. Is the NNA truly the only place to become a loan signing agent? Absolutely. You have to every year renew with a uh, the NNA. And if you don't have it on your calendar every year that you renew, I had to do it. Beth had to do it. We've been doing this for 20 years. Uh, well, she's been doing it for 20 years or plus, and I've been doing it for 10 years plus. Um, you have to do it every year. So yes, that's the only certification out there that makes you a loan signing agent. But does it make you a good loan signing agent? No. I have to say that. It is an ethical test. Uh, so that's where you become a loan signing agent. But will people hire you with just that? No. You're going to need additional training on top of that. A lot of training courses, including Notary Stars. Uh, but that is, not the, that is the one place, you, if you don't take that one, you will not get hired. Second question, should I start my business page even though I'm uh, entirely free to do, not entirely free to do general notary work? Yes, because you can start collecting reviews for what you can do uh, ahead of time so that when you do cross over that, that field of going full-time, you have those reviews. And also you can partner with another notary to refer that business to, which is a great idea, right? You refer other notaries business when you're not available. Just board them the inquiry. You might have to do a little double time. And I think there was another part to this, Miss Beth, as well. Um, what would be the best course of action for finding a mentor? And could you recommend any books or resources for personal growth and business? Absolutely. Notary stars. Um, after you've taken that NNA training, I would love for you to come visit us at Notary Stars. You're going to get a full overview of everything from general notary or basic notary training to every loan product you'll ever come in contact with. And we're going to point you in the direction of wonderful trainers outside of our company that you can go to to learn other facets of this business. We even have a lot of them come in here and give you presentations on what they can teach you outside of loan signing. So if you're brand new, we're a wonderful place right after the NNA to go. Um, so I, I kind of appreciate those questions. One more piece to this puzzle. Do we get a certificate at the end of Notary Stars training, just like the NNA certificate? Do we get that at Notary Stars? No, Notary Stars is not a certificate program. We're a continuing education program. Everybody on this call, 122 people right now, and the thousands of people that will watch this on the replay. Thank you for being here tonight. But we are the dorks of the industry. We are the ones that want to do this right. We are a continuing education program. And I love all these nodding heads. I wish more cameras were on right now because every single one of you right now 
are dedicated to signing agent excellence, even if you're not under the umbrella of Notary Stars at the moment, which is our slogan for 2024, dedicated to excellence. If you are here tonight, that means you are dedicating yourself to excellence because you are looking for more education and you can't ask for anything more. There's a lot of notaries out there that are not dedicating themselves to excellence, and all of you will be blessed for that. So, no, we do not offer certifications because certifications can be done in 10 hours. Good notaries stay on their toes and continue to educate themselves. I think you just called us all dorks. Did you hear I that? I did. We're all, I'm a dork, too. <laughs> Don't let the hair dye and the funny flip fool you. Like, this is, I, I'm proud to be a dork. You know, you don't get all those, I mean, I know you guys can't see them. You don't get those little certifications and books and all those things. I'm proud to be a dork. And it, 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 if you're afraid to be called a dork or a nerd or anything, I'm telling you, it's a cool life because it brought me a multi-million dollar company into my life. And all of you can have that too, but you got to know what you're doing. And I'm not ashamed to say I learn something new every day and I am not the brightest light on the Christmas tree. So we're all either dorks, geeks, nerds, whatever you want to call us. We're all here for the same reason. Let's do it. And let's detail. protect each other because that's, I'm telling you, uh, it's it's not, this is not an easy job. I mean, we don't just hang a shingle and yeah. the money comes. It's all about education. So I, I like that question too. Ms. Beth, I think the next question is for, actually for uh, Bill. Um we have a question about any better RON platforms to use. And Bill, what do you have to say about finding a RON platform? That's kind of a loaded question. <laughs> There's a couple of things that you want to consider there. Number one, first and foremost, I would suppose would be, does your state allow the platforms that you want to use? Because that's the first thing. You have to stay within your uh, jurisdiction of licensing and the rules that they say that you have to follow. Um, and then the next thing you have to do is figure out <clears throat> what's your business model? Who are you going after? Because there's really, there's different types of platforms that serve different purposes. There's ones uh, that are completely driven by somebody else. <clears throat> you can't take any work to them. You can't do any of their work unless it's assigned to you. Um, there are platforms that are just for an independent notary that wants to bring all of their work to be done. And the, the platform is just the uh, facilitating portion of it. <clears throat> there are sites um, that will supply you work, but also will allow you to do your own work there. So it's kind of hard to answer what's the best platform or what's a better platform. It all really depends on what is your goal, what does your state allow, and then also um, sometimes what what are your people that uh, not not the people specifically, but what are the documents that you're doing? Are you doing large packages? Are you doing small little general general notary work, one shot kind of deals? So um, what I would suggest is come to class on Friday. And you could probably tell me a little bit more about what you're looking to do. And I can probably steer you in the right direction a little better. Um, so and then Bill, was that for a non-answer answer? <laughs> that, that was a great answer, non-answer. Um, I also want to let people know that at Notary Stars, uh, you work really hard on bringing, and, and by the way, Bill is our instructor at Notary Stars, but he's also uh, managing the Notary Lounge on Online Notaries Public. Um, so... I'm posting in the chat right now two links uh, for interviews on Online Notaries Public and on Notary Stars, if you're a member of either one of those. Bill works really hard at bringing in the RON platforms to like showcase what they have to offer. And there's two ways that you can learn about those. You can watch those reviews uh, of the actual interviews on Notary Stars. Or you can actually go to our comparison. Now, you do have to be a member of Notary Stars to get those. We bring them in for free, but if you've missed them, and they come back and update every year uh, if they have updates to their platforms. But we have tier sheets where you can like compare them, like print them out, lay them on the floor, and say, which one's going to be the best one for me? And if they haven't come to Notary Stars yet, they didn't get the memo that 
this is where the good notaries are and we'll get them eventually to come over and give us an interview. Uh, but most of the major heavy hitters have come and visited notary stars and already provided all of that information for you so you can compare those 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 things. Hey, Ronnie, I think Kirsten just coined a new word. We're going to have to adopt that as our moniker. Nerderies. Nerderies, I love it. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. <laughs> Do we want to start taking hands here? Yes, let's go ahead and get some of those hands. Anissa, would you like to unmute and please ask your question? We already know you're from Arizona. <laughs> yes. Um, I just wanted Ronnie to give me an example of what he was speaking on in the introduction when he said to some notaries, the IDs are not matching. What is an example of that? So we have notaries that take IDs where the, the middle name is not correct. We have notaries that take them and it's a completely different last name. Um, if title's going <laughs> to taking that, then it's truly on the notary. Uh, you are... You are the notary. And if title winds up taking it, you might think, well, they should stop me. No, they shouldn't. They're looking to close a loan. You're the third party that's supposed to stop these things. And so they will take it sometimes. And are, are actually more times than you think. Um, so uh, that's what I'm talking about when it's a completely different name. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you asking that question. So sometimes that happens often, like when someone gets married um, and they change their last name and they don't have an ID with their new married last name, but maybe they have a work ID that has that last new last name on it with a photo. Both of those things should be submitted so that they know what you used to satisfy that difference. And that's what's not happening. All right, VJ. Hi, VJ. You want to go ahead and unmute? Well, your mic's not on because I can't hear you. You're not muted on our side. Miss um, VJ, it's, it doesn't seem to be working. So if you want to type it, I think. Uh, I think you tied it. Is that the same thing in the chat that you want to know? Okay, we'll take it from the chat there. Okay, so um, Miss Beth, she typed it in the chat. She said, "How does spot a fake ID video?" Beth mentioned a app and our cell phone and other gadget to buy, investigate uh, to better investigate the ID. Can you please share the name of that app or the gadget? Well, there's a couple of different ones, and I'm gonna defer you to doing a search on Google Play Store or your Apple, um, what's it called, an Apple, um, Apple Store, <laughs> to find those apps, because I can't tell you right off the top of my head. I use one called Blink ID, but you can't get into Blink ID anymore. They don't sell individual accounts. Um, so you're looking for a um, uh, an app that, will scan the barcode on the back of the ID. And all that does is tell you what's contained, what's embedded in that barcode. So, and you're looking at that displayed information to make sure it matches the front of the ID. So uh, there's a um, whole blog article that I did on that, BJ. If you wanna go to, uh, in a video, if you wanna go to our website and look for how to spot a fake ID. It'll list some of those apps for you there. But I do wanna tell you guys, if you are using a um, electronic journal, there are a couple of those journals out there that do the same thing as well. That scanning that barcode and automatically entering that uh, signer's ID information into your journal is a time saver for sure. Um, so you could use that as well, BJ. Ms. Beth, I just want to uh, say that I'm going to post that article that you wrote uh, into the chat. And uh, I'm posting it right now. That article was written in 11, 2023. 20, so it's pretty recent. Um, so I posted that in the chat for everybody. If you want to take a look at that article, um, 
And with 134 people on the call, I hope you'll actually go over there and grab that chat link uh, as well. Because Miss Beth, she she doesn't just do an article; she actually does the research. You know, she's not doing Chat GPT to turn out her articles. You know, you get <laughs> about a good article out of her a month, sometimes two. And 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 here's the thing. She could probably do a thousand of them, but she's not going to do some chat GPT research kind of stuff for you. It's going to be a good article. So please go in there and and uh, download that or, or click on that link. And by the way, guys, at the end of the meeting, you'll be able to download the chat as well to be able to take all of the links that we post with you. But just in case, click on them and pin them while we're going. Ms. Beth, uh, I know we have two hands raised, but this next one shouldn't be too too long of a question. Um, and I'd like to get uh, Lenny's question, if you don't mind. It says, for beginning to obtain general notary award, what is the most effective? And also, do you have training on nursing uh, homes and hospitals? Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming he's asking <laughs> how to get general notary work. Um, and if your focus is on general notary work, I'm going to tell you your website is going to be your best friend. You've got to have a, most people search for a notary using Google Voice, you know, where's where's the nearest notary, right? Um, or searching online, notary near me. So you really, really need to have a website set up that has very optimized SEO so that you get reach out to um, whatever community you're trying to target. And that could be for Ron too, right? Um, but I'm going to tell you it's your website, number one. Number two, decide who your customer is. Do you want to um, just general notary work um, in general? Ge that's kind of an oxymoron, general notary work in general. Or do you want to focus on a segment? Do you want to do nursing homes, uh, senior centers, um, schools? Um, figure out who that is, and you can actually do some um, door knocks, go visit them, take a flyer, take your resume, take your business cards. And, uh, I've got five nursing homes within five blocks of me or not nursing homes, uh, senior centers within five blocks of me. And they call me all the time. And I never did anything more than walk in there with a flyer, a resume and a business card. Well, 15 business cards. Cause right. They hand them out to their residents. And they keep me pretty busy. So figure out who your customer is, get your website up, and that should get you started on general notary work. Um, Ms. We current. Go ahead. You move on, can I say one thing about this? Because there's, you said something that just really strikes a chord with me in a really good way. You said your website is like the number one thing. And I know that notaries are always targeted for Google My Business. And I just want to share my screen and show something uh, that to kind of show notaries uh, what they can do with their website. So I'm sharing my screen. Can you see that incognito Google business uh, window there, Miss Beth? Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is just an a incognito window. This is my browser, but it means it has no history to it whatsoever. And this is not staged or anything. I just want to put this in there. So like if I was looking for Phoenix jail notary, this is what an optimized website is. You'll see that Unlimited Ink Notary, my company, comes up the very first thing on Google search. You'll also see for another jail, then we have Notary Stars, Arizona Mobile Notary Services. You'll notice the logo is also Unlimited Ink Notary. This is one of my students and also one of your colleagues here. We keep going down. I don't know this person or they might be a part of my class. Another person in my class, Notary Stars. This person's in my class. He's actually here tonight, Butch. We're dominating the first page of Google. And when those people tell you that you need to optimize your Google search and they're charging you money for that, look what we did to the first page of Google. That's Google My Business. Okay. I want to point this out to everyone that you can dominate the first page of Google. Alexa, stop. You can dominate the first page of Google and push Google My Business down. So Miss Beth is right. Your website is your number one defense. I see companies all the time coming up before Google My Business, and I teach this to my students at the marketing level. Um, so I just wanted to share my screen and let you know Miss Beth was right when she said 
Your website is your first defense, but if you get caught up in thinking that Google My Business is your only ammo, you will be wrong, okay? And I mean that with love because search engine optimization, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Um, okay, Miss Beth, I'll let you take it on to the next question here. Okay, so we have, oh, the second half of Letty's question was, um, do you have training for nursing home and hospitals? We have separate training that you maybe wouldn't zone in on as nursing home and hospitals. So we have um, competency and coherency videos that teach you um, how to talk to people who are in those situations, what to look out for. Um, and what's the other one? I just lost it. Two videos on our website that can help you out there. We are working on um, nursing home and hospital specific step-by-step -step training. We don't have that available for you yet, but there's two separate videos that you can use to fill those gaps in the meantime. And Mr. Ronnie, not to change the subject, but we have a special guest here tonight. Let's let's let that special guest have. Uh, is it who I think it is? Delora. Yeah. All right, Miss Delora, I'm gonna make you a co-host and also pin you up for just a moment. We are ready for you when you are ready. Okay, great. Hi, everybody. Uh, Delora again. I've been here for a few weeks now. I've partnered with Ronnie and Beth to help you all with health insurance coverage. And sorry for my appearance today. If you don't know anything about me, <laughs> um, I travel around the United States in an RV and we're currently boondocking this week. And so that means that we are without hookups. So we have to bring in our water. We don't have electricity other than our generator. And we're out in the Arizona desert, which is beautiful. But <laughs> I'm not able to do my regular, like, get ready for meetings. So here I am, the best I can be. So anyways, I'm here to help you all with health insurance coverage. Um, I primarily help self-employed people or 1099 contracted uh, people are my main clients because there is not a lot of health insurance options out there for you unless you have a spouse that has a career and you can jump on their insurance. And that's not always the best option either. Sometimes that's expensive or it's not the best coverage. Um, but anyways, there's lots of different scenarios and I'm not gonna take your meeting up with all of those, but health insurance is incredibly important. And I am here to help you guys protect your assets, protect what you're trying to build, protect yourself, protect your families. If you have employees, I can help with small groups. Um, and I'm just here for any kind of health insurance questions that you may have. Ms. Delora, I've, I've used this example so many times, but I have to take an emotional dig tonight. Um, so when I was 21, I was two days off my father's insurance. I got bacterial meningitis. I was one of five kids in Atlanta that passed, uh, that I, I actually passed away, but they saved my life. But I was two days off my father's insurance and I filed bankruptcy when I was 22 because of those medical bills. At my age now, I could not stand that. But I bring that up because this is also very near and dear to my heart. The same disease that almost killed me just took one of our employee's sisters uh, this week. And, you know, I'm helping them through that, you know, as an employee of this company. Um, I have to tell you, you know, we don't know when something's going to hit. And as business owners, it's just the smartest thing that we can do to protect ourselves. So thank you for stopping by each month or every week or whatever you want to stop by. I did post into the chat for everybody um, a link to our page, which is for all notary stars, no matter what level you're on, or even if you're just a visitor looking for health insurance in the industry. There's no affiliate marketing going on here. Delora is here because we need someone to be able to help protect business owners. And I have to tell you, if I went through what I went through at 22 at 43, I wouldn't be able to make it. So health insurance is one of those things that we have to have as business owners or else we will be done. So thank you, Ms. Delora. I really appreciate you coming by. Absolutely. You all have a great night. You too. Thanks, Delora. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. 
Mr. Ronnie, we have Danielle whose arm's getting tired here. So let's go ahead and let her unmute and ask her question. Look at her star shining bright in the background. I love it. I meant to put more batteries in mine. If you guys get a little bit low um, on battery, it, it you just put another double A's in there. But I sometimes leave mine on all week and it gets low. So Miss Danielle, when you're ready. <laughs> Okay, so to keep up with the theme of, you know, names, I've been receiving a lot of pushback from um, customers who have a suffix and they're no longer putting the suffix on passports and um, driver's licenses. And, um, you know, but here I'm looking at documents that have a suffix um, and it has to have it. In my opinion, it has to have it, it has to be there. And um, I've gotten a lot of people bringing up the same Google web search. And in that, when you just type in using suffixes on identification, it comes up with government issued documentation is only supposed to use your legal name. Suffix suffixes, like junior and senior are not normally part of a person's legal name. So these do not appear on identification. All righty. I think you got it backwards. Your birth certificate, if you are born a junior, it will indeed have junior on it. That's yes, but I have I the last well, the last person that I had, um, he was signing a trust. His boss, his father was on the trust, and his father had his, you know, full name. He's the senior, but it doesn't say senior, it's just his name, um, as well as himself. And he had three sisters. It did not have um, junior on it. And his his uh, driver's license did not have junior and his passport did not have junior. He gave me his um, birth certificate, which did, and his um, social security card also did. So but was not on not the passport or the state ID. Okay. So um Ms. Beth, I do not want to cut you off, but before you answer, because you're the expert on this, can I just say one thing? Sure. I'm a junior. And I have to tell you, I can't tell you how many times at the bank that I've been mixed up at the bank in my hometown. When I was younger, I went, went in and they gave me money out of my father's account. And I just want to hear what you have to say about this, because this is kind of a big deal when you are... We have exactly the same name. We actually look alike. And I just want to point it out to notaries. This is our job. And I want Miss Beth to say, but I have to tell you, when I was 19, I went into the bank to go withdraw money to buy a car that I had earned. And I can't believe I'm recording this. I'm going to put it on the internet. My mom's going to kill me. They gave me money out of my father's account. I'm sure the statutes of limitations have passed. They gave me money out of my father's account. I withdrew it. And no questions asked. The next week, my dad goes in and says, someone took all this money out of my account. And nothing. Yet. My mom just said, shh, he, ah. he deserves it. So that was a funny story. That happens in a small town. But Miss Beth, let's get back to the notary part. I, I just wanted to point out that there is a difference between junior and senior. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, for sure. So here's the deal. When you're dealing with junior or senior, particularly when we're talking about anything in the notarial world, you have to be absolutely certain that junior isn't signing for senior and senior isn't signing for junior. You need to know who that is. Senior isn't a legal designation. So senior should never be on anything because you're not going to get that on an ID. Um, but you have to somehow distinguish between junior and senior. And I'm going to say that since the advent of the real ID, you can't get an ID any longer without your full legal name. So if you're looking at a passport or a driver's license, it's not the real ID. It's not the one with the gold star. Um, and if they went to apply for the real ID, then they would have to present a birth certificate and a social security card, and they would be issuing that driver's license in that legal name, junior or the third or the fourth or the fifth, if you're George Foreman, right? The fifth. So it has to be on there. So we've always had issues with that. We're starting to come into the light 
where that's not such an issue anymore. But for you, Danielle, you're going to have to absolutely be certain if you're signing junior, that the person in front of you is junior. And the birth certificate doesn't have a photo on it. No, it doesn't. But, um, and right. And neither does his social security card, yeah. but his passport didn't say junior. Yeah. So maybe you didn't have And to you have that. to present your birth certificate and social security card and all the same things that you need to for the real ID for your social, for your passport. Yeah. When I got my passport, I used a hyphenated married last name and I told them I don't want hyphenated on there. They said, it has to be there. And I'm going, son of Lee. So yeah, so yeah, it's a it's a dilemma for, for us. Um, you have to be absolutely certain that if you're signing junior, junior's the one sitting across the, the table from you. And if you use other supporting documentation, I don't know how New Jersey's ID uh, requirements read. Um, I, specifically, I'd have to look it up for New Jersey. It says picture or um, picture or signature. Okay, so you're going to have to be absolutely certain it's the right person. If you're sending back an ID that doesn't match the documents, you need to explain what you viewed that convinced you this was the right person. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough place to be. Do you want me to put this in the chat, the Google search, Ronnie? You want to take a look at it? Yes, please. Thank you, guys. Okay, Danielle. Thank you, hon. Tiffany, Tiffany G, go ahead and unmute and ask your question. Hello, everybody. My name is Tiffany G. I'm from Miami, Florida. And my question is extremely simple. Is there a marketing only class that I only have to pay and only show up to marketing? Or is it an all in one type of thing? I'll take that one, Miss Beth. Um, so okay. stars, we have two levels. We have the Notary Star and then we have the Notary Star plus marketing. At this time, there is no just marketing only uh, because the way I feel personally about it, Miss Tiffany, is I expect my students at the marketing level when I'm teaching them how to invite that business in to also be abreast on everything going on in the community. I don't put the cart before the horse here at Notary Stars. Um, I don't teach people marketing if they don't stay up to date on current rules and regulations and things going on in the community. So it is an addition to the Notary Star level. Uh, before I ever opened this course, I promised that it would always be dedication to excellence before I started teaching. And, and so that's why it is the way that it is. And I do not imagine that I'll ever break off the marketing level and be like, just learn to market. Okay. Thank but you. I, pre I appreciate that question though. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the answer. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Miss Beth, uh, there's a, I, I want to, we're, we got about 15 minutes left uh, for the session, and we may not be able to get to all the job forms, which are amazing. Uh, and I know Miss Nancy's got her hand up, but she hasn't had up that long. She's a tough gal because uh, she, <laughs> she's always with us. Uh, I want to get through two of the questions. I think the next one from Anna C. and Mary Beth, can you read that one out? I can as soon as I find it. Uh, Anna C. and Mary Beth, best ways to negotiate with signing services without turning them off. Now, I actually wrote them back uh, an answer to this, and I want to get to the next job form question, too, because I want to see how many we can kill in the next 15 minutes. But I don't want to not give great answers. So the best ways to negotiate with signing services without turning them off is number one, never accept an order until you've read the details. I see notaries out there just competing to try to click and you'll be surprised if you actually read the details or get to know the clients that you're working for, how much better that will be for you. Um, I wanna make a note now, you cannot charge more for bilingual services or power of attorney signings, whether you think you can or not. And if someone taught you that, please send them to me. I'd love to talk to that person. You are a notary and sometimes signatures are longer. Sometimes you have to talk to people in a different language and I'm going to rant for one second. Why in that H-E double hockey sticks would you charge somebody for the language you speak 
or can speak, that is so wrong. Power of attorney signing may have more language. A trust signing may have more language, but stop doing that. But you can counter uh, offer politely for distance, okay? And you need to be able to politely explain that. If a signing allows you to, uh, uh, to counter, just reply politely with the explanation. I have to take a ferry there. This is around a mountain. I lived in Tucson for a while and there was a whole community behind the mountain that took a long time to get to, even though it was as the crow flies two miles away, but I had to go 15 miles one way, three miles another way, and another, you know, I had to go around an entire structure. Just reply respectfully, this is around a mountain. I need more money. You don't need to get into details. Don't think that they're disrespecting you. They may not understand because all Google searches are as the crow flies. So make sure that you 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 uh, do that. And then the last thing is always keep it reasonable. You know, know what you can charge in your area. I know what you're told on the internet that you can make two hundred to three hundred dollars a signing. Have any of you ever seen that? Unless you're an attorney. Anybody here? Unless it's like a dire and emergency, probably not. Maybe New York, maybe certain parts of Los Angeles. But let's keep it realistic. Keep it dialed into the realistic of this career. You'll have a long time in it. I have some notes that I wrote for all of those, uh, for those, but I want to speed it up. So those are my key points. And then, Miss Beth, this next one's really for you. And then we'll get to Nancy's hand up. Um, Danielle wrote, uh, what's the best things to invest in and starting off uh, the best way to gauge what prices to charge? Well, you've already kind of addressed that pricing issue. You got to really look at it for what's what your area will bear. You know, you know if you're in Podunk, Tennessee, nope, not throwing shade on Tennessee. I'm just saying small town Tennessee, right? Versus Los Angeles, California, there's going to be a huge disparaging uh, difference between what California can charge and what you can charge. Um, so you're going to maybe have to do some research, find out what other notaries are charged. We're talking about loan signing work here, not um, notarial fees, right? Um, find out just what those loan packages are going for, and you'll have an idea where to price yourself on that. Um, and best things to invest in starting off, um, well, there's two categories. One is marketing and one is equipment. And I'm going to go right back to marketing first and say, you got to have a website. Even if you're doing loan signings, those companies are going to look and see um, what your profile is on social media and the internet. They want to know who they're working with. And sometimes that's the only way they can find out. Not that they're necessarily hiring you from your website, but that's where you tell your life story. That's where you let them know what your education is, what your experience is. And the way you set up your website can even speak without saying anything, right? If it's professionally done and it looks nice and it's cohesive, um, they're going to get a good vibe off of that. The other thing is equipment. The other category, you obviously have to have a laser printer, not inkjet, guys. Um, has to be a laser printer. You have to be able to print documents. You need to print on legal and letter size. Um, if you don't, if you can't afford the bump in price from a single tray to a dual tray, then you can invest in something like page separator software that'll allow you to split a loan signing package out. You put letter size in your printer and you print all the letter, you switch it out to legal and you print all the legal side, and then you use the guide to show you how to uh, collate those pages back in the correct order. So a good printer, you got to have a scanner. Definitely have to have a scanner. As a new notary, you're probably going to be required to do scan backs on a lot of your orders. But I'm also going to say that it's not just new notaries that have a requirement for scan backs. There's a lot of 
seller packages that have to be scanned back because they're closing immediately. Um, there could be trailing documents that you're doing that the title company needs back immediately after the closing when those actual signed wet signatures come back in UPS or FedEx, then they'll collate that into the file, but they close on scans. So you've got to have a good scanner. Printer, scanner, blue and black pens, obviously your notarial equipment, your, your stamp, um, a journal. Um, that's probably the bare minimum you could get away with. You also need to make sure you keep a a uh, copy of your notarial handbook for your state in your bag with you and a, you know, four or five copies of every type of certificate that you're authorized to complete in your state in case you need to replace it with a loose certificate in a loan package. Um, we have a blog and a video on the website that goes, it's entitled, What's in Your Bag? And... Let's see if Ronnie has already posted that. I did post it in the chat and I was also sharing my screen, Miss Beth. I want to point out to a lot of the people because out of the 147 people that's been on the call, I know we're getting quite toward quite toward the end here. Um, yeah. We have an entire free notary resources section. It doesn't matter if you're a member or not, where we want you to come explore, you know, everything about printers, scanners, books that are good for the industry burning questions, business cards. I mean, it goes on. Um, and then our blog session uh, section as well, where we can find that what's in your notary bag uh, article. Um, I hope you guys will come and explore, you know, all of the articles that, that get there. Now that what's in your, there's that article that we posted earlier. Um, these are not like fluff articles where you can, you know, go through and just find anything. I mean, Miss Beth did that one almost a year ago about what's in your notary bag, which I did post in the chat. Uh, but I want to sort of make sure that everybody's aware of all of the amazing blogs that the entire team here writes um, for it. And I did post the what's in your bag uh, into the chat as well, but I'm just scrolling through right now so everybody can kind of see what we have available. I mean, the the fun never stops here at Notary Stars. <laughs> <laughs> there is a ton of information just in the uh, resource section, in the blog session section on YouTube, and a lot of it's free. Some of it you do have to be a member to access, but guys, a lot of that is free. Yep. Um, can we go to Miss Nancy's question, Miss Beth? Absolutely, Nancy. Go ahead. You can put your arm down now. I know it's tired. <laughs> I can't hear you though. Miss Nancy, we can't hear you. You're off mute, but there's no sound. Okay. No, my microphone was off. Sorry. There you go. Um, earlier, you put yourself incognito. How do you do that? Who put themselves incognito? Ronnie did. Incognito oh, wow. is a very easy tool to use and it actually gives you a fresh browser and it means it won't be on your browsing history. So I'll actually just show how I did that earlier. Um, so you guys are going to see the meeting notes for tonight and you'll see that we have tons of questions that we won't be able to get to tonight, but we'll get to them next week. Um, so whenever you click these three dots here, you're going to say new private window. Google calls it incognito, but when you get a new private uh, tab, that's a really great way for a marketer to understand because if you're constantly looking at your business, you can't really tell because it's going to suggest for you. But when you go to incognito, it actually shows you a fresh browsing history that you've never done before so that you can actually see if your business is coming up. So I use incognito a lot as a marketing agent to be able to search for certain things. And when I showed that, maybe you guys didn't know, um, but when I, when I showed earlier in the, in the session, I said, um, you can come here and Google this and you see all of this on the first page of Google. It's a way to prove that it's actually happening because your internet history sometimes clogs up what you will see if you've been there before, if you Googled it before. So I always use uh, in, pri uh, in private tabs or Google um, incognito in order to like prove that it's actually happening. Right. I've seen you go there before, but I never knew how you did that. Yeah, it's those three little dots at the top. Everybody has that ability to, to do that. Um, Perfect. 
Miss Beth, I think we are, um, I think we are at our time. And do you think we have time for one more question or do you think we need to start doing our sign off? We got four minutes, let's go for it. All right, let's see where we were in the questions. Angela R, right? Use this question because it's from Rosa, and I think it's a, actually a really great question. It's for you. Can I can I get this oh, one? Sure. And I see Laura, so we might have to take two. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I I do have something to say at the end of this. Um, so let's get to Rosa, and then we'll go to Laura, and then those are our last two questions. Um, this is for definitely you, for Miss Beth. It says, "I keep getting calls to create and notarize POA uh, to be used in Mexico." I tell them that as notaries, we're not allowed to create POA, but I will be happy to notarize it. They quickly got off the phone and they say, well, they, they will look for another notary. Do you get requests for uh, similar to mine? And if so, how do you explain them to keep, uh, to how do you explain this to them to keep them as your customer? Well, yeah, being in Arizona and being close to that um, Mexican border, we get that all the time. But here's what you have to keep in mind. Um, if you're letting them know that you can't create a document, um, you might be able to point them to something on the website where they can look up a generic POA that they can choose and fill in the blanks um, and then bring it to you and you can notarize. You have to also understand that um, uh, a notarial public is not the same in Mexico as it is in the United States. So they are attorneys, we are not. Attorneys can create and notarize documents. We can't do the creation part, but that doesn't keep you from uh, suggesting that they might be able to do an internet search, send them to LegalZoom or documentpreparers.com, someplace like that to look up what type of power of attorney that they're interested in executing. And once they get that far, they can call you back and you'd be happy to meet with them and get it notarized. Thank you, Ms. Beth. And then we have one more question. We we had already called it, Ms. Angela, uh, if you want to send it in on the job form. But Ms. Laura, if you are ready for your question, uh, we'll stay around, we'll cut the feed, but we've found that if we go hours and hours anymore, that people don't want to uh, stick around and that's okay because the East Coast has to get to bed and you're in Oregon. So we'll get your question answered, sure. but it'll be off the camera. <laughs> okay. Well, I lowered my hand earlier because I didn't think you were going to go past. So that's why I put it back up when you had a few more minutes. Um, I had a signing um, a few days ago. And when I got there, it was at a house that was going to be demolished. So we couldn't go indoors and sit at a kitchen table or anything. And they had this really old fashioned bistro table. It was like the wrought iron type of tables. And it was rusted and the chairs were rusted. And so there were only two chairs for the wife and I to sit on. And then the gentleman was standing the whole time and the weather was getting bad. <laughs> and on top of that, as we were getting halfway through, it started to drizzle. So I suggested we just grab everything and get in my car. So we ended up doing the signing in my car. Now, my question to you is, at the very beginning when I realized that we were not going to be able to go indoors and do a, a signing properly in a place where I could actually get signings from everybody. Should I have suggested that maybe we go to a local restaurant or something like that instead of staying there? Because they were actually not living in this place. It was up for demolish. You know? <laughs> so is that what I should have done? Hi, <laughs> hi, Lauren. Yep. Can, I, can I be the dork on this one? Yeah. <laughs> you can the, the nerdery. So, I'm one of those people who have a fold-out table in the back of my car. Okay. Yep. 
So I can also use those fold out tables and I $35 at Walmart, right? I've done them in Walmart parking lot with the $35 table, which is I think full circle. But uh, I actually just learned this and no, I don't believe on the hood of a car or whatever. I actually was going to a business meeting and I've been meaning to get this out. So this is wonderful. Um, wonderful timing, Miss Laura. I love this because it, it, I don't want to forget this. I went to a business meeting on the Notice Stars credit card processing and they were like, we can save you thousands of dollars or you know whatever over a year. And I was like, okay. And I said, how about Starbucks? Because I want coffee. But Starbucks tables are like this small and the outside tables have the little grates in it. And he goes, how about McDonald's? There's one next door. And I asked him, I said, is there a reason why you keep pushing McDonald's when I keep saying Starbucks and I'm the client? He goes, because there's an actual table there and we can actually put out documents and we can actually sign them and we can go through everything. And I thought, you just taught me something that is going to help a lot of notaries. And in your case, if you're getting in a car, I would say if you don't have that fold out table, yes, absolutely suggest let's go to a place where we actually have room to put out legal size paper, sign them and pass it between people. I will never do another signing inside of a car. I've done them. It never I works out well. Or 60% <laughs> of the time the notary misses something and we hear, well, we had a sign in the car and there was no light and there was no dark. You guys have to set yourselves up for success. And I'm guilty of that too. So no down talk. If you've been forced into someone else's car to sign their documents, I'm not doing it anymore. I have a fold out table. We can go anywhere you want to, a lobby of a hotel nearby or a, wherever, and I can fold out my table. Or we can go to somewhere that actually has countertop space mm -hmm. for legal size documents that we can pass around the table and do this right. So well, and it started raining too. So that's the yeah. halfway through. Oh, she froze on us. Miss Laura, you froze, and we we see a lot of people moving. So we're gonna. It sounds like you're trying. There. So that was my other concern. Is besides that we didn't have any room. Yeah, Miss Laura, rain. you're yeah. breaking up a little bit there. And you just came back. So thank you for bringing that to the table tonight. That was great. And I hope you got out of it um, what we had to put into it. But thank you for that. Okay. All right, guys. Um, we are at time for tonight. But I do have a little announcement. And Angela, if you'll stick around right at the end of that announcement, I'll, I'll do that. But let's go ahead and give our signature wave, everybody. If you've been here for the full hour with us, the hour and four minutes, Please turn on those cameras and let's give our signature wave. We do this wave so that you can wave to yourself if you come back to the replay for the future notaries that are coming along with us. And thank you all. I see Miss Laura holding up her star there. I see all the stars in the background. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. And I always say, if you're not naked, turn on those cameras. If you're not stuffing your face, turn on those cameras. Miss Beth, how do we say it professionally here at Notary Stars? Well, especially right now, since California is getting so much rain, just to remind you guys, we're all in the same storm. We are not in the same boat. Some of us have yachts, some of us have canoes, and some are just dog paddling. Just remember to be kind. Reach over and grab the hand of the person next to you and take them along with you on your notary journey. Thank you, guys. Have a good evening.